Very good morning to all the viewers and subscribers. So this morning we really haven't had to travel far. We've basically started off where we left off on the last virtual safari and that's with five members of the Mburi Pride lying right on the road that goes to the Tinsualo Star Village. So very nice surprise to come around the corner and bump them this morning. I was sort of thinking about what my plan was and where I was going to go and now they've just sort of decided the plan for me. So pretty much yeah all five that that we saw in the last episode the two older lionesses and the three youngsters and uh, yeah they're lying on the road now hopefully they'll get up as you can see very cloudy overcast conditions same as it was on the last episode which was yesterday when we were trying to follow up on them so let's see what they do this morning Okay, so after leaving the Mburis this morning, we bumped into this group of ground hornbills pretty much in the same area where we've been seeing them the last couple of episodes. And they always provide such entertainment. They really are striking birds, and uh, the way that they walk around and forage is also just super entertaining. So this afternoon we've headed out and we've come back down south to check on the Red Hawk male from the last episode and uh, apparently he's still in the same area with the kill. I don't know how much of the kill's left. Okay, so we've got visual of the Red Hawk male again and He's busy feeding on the remains of that impala carcass from the last episode. He's taken it out the tree, it fell out the tree, and now he's feeding on, on the ground. He is obviously at risk here, and it could be lions in the area, it could be hyenas. So we're going to wait and see if anything comes in and picks up the scent of the carcass and what he does. So we've just experienced unbelievable power from the Red Hawk male and it just shows you how strong these big cats actually are for him to leap with all of that entanglement of impala carcass, legs, ribs, bones and to pull that up a tree and almost make it look effortless. It's just 
something you can't actually believe. At the moment we are going to leave the red hawk male in peace. We had a great sighting of him feeding on the ground. I don't think he's going to feed much more for the time being. I think he's had his full. He's busy grooming himself now on this other branch. And the sun has just gone down. So obviously, as you know, it was far south the other day. It is still far south. So we have to start making our way back to camp. But a really cool sighting of the red hawk male. He's slowly becoming one of the favorite leopards and definitely favorite male leopard in the Manuleti at the moment. We've also just received word that one of the leopard cubs have been seen recently. By recent I mean a few minutes ago. So that's also exciting news. We haven't seen the cubs at all um, this year yet and we haven't seen the, their mother, the Sable Bridge female e either. So I think the plan for tomorrow morning will be to go up north and try and see if we can get visual in them and see what they're doing. So I cannot tell you how wonderful it is to see one of the leopard cubs again and it looks like it's little Sasakile. I would love to know where Shongile is. Obviously, like I've said, it's very tough to follow these cats, especially these youngsters in this type of terrain in summer. So I'm just incredibly grateful that we've actually got to just see one of them now. But it looks like it's little Sasakile, so great news. It's been close to I'd say over a month now since I last saw the leopard cubs and I think it was about nearly a week and a bit ago since anyone saw the cubs last and um, I saw both of them with the mother being the Sable Bridge female and uh, it looks like we've just got one of the youngsters now again I don't know where Shongile is with her mother I hope that they're not too far and I hope we'll get to see them soon Sasakile had a little bit of a leap of faith over there and lunged straight out of the tree.
well, so I'm actually really lost for words. Sasakile so climbed down the tree and uh, she came towards the vehicle. You could see she had a little bit of a curious, curious nature to her. She's busy looking around, not too sure what to make of it. But I, I just can't believe what just happened. She's just touched the tire, which I've seen before with lions and leopards and sometimes cheetah and hyenas and even wild dogs all smell the tire and bite the tire. But uh, she lifted herself up onto the bar running parallel to the vehicle. It's not a great shot that I got of her. I thought I got her better, but I was actually so excited and wasn't really sure what to do uh, with her doing that. I mean, I've never had a, a leopard or anything do that that close before. Um, but she literally just lifted up for a few seconds, smelt the bonnet, and then went back down and walked around. It's, it's unbelievable. It's, uh, you know, when you, I got to the sighting, I thought this is beautiful with her in the tree, and I wonder what she's going to do this morning. Her sister's not here, so I don't think she's going to be very playful, but wow, like unbelievable stuff to to see that definitely a, f a first for me and a, a memory that will live long on in my mind with Sasakile, one of the leopard cubs. Okay so we've just gotten back to camp now after trying to find Sasakile again and we really struggled in that long grass. It's always tough this time of the year keeping up with with anything, never mind lions following a young lep leopard cub in the grass is really not easy. But uh, just to recap on that sighting with Sasakile, obviously very interesting encounter, um, my first time having a close encounter with a leopard like that and uh, yeah obviously one that's not really encouraged, we, we tend to, to move away from behavior like that, um, you would have seen in the video when she actually lifted herself up on the car, the video stopped and that was because I was then actually hitting the side of the door very gently and sort of just telling her no, don't do that, that's not allowed and uh, she didn't really take too much notice but she did sort of listen in a way and drop her head and, and move. I think it was more the hitting on the door than, than me actually talking. And uh, it's just a, a little a warning in a way just for her to know that it's not actually okay what she's doing and it's not, it's not right. Obviously, yeah, we don't encourage behavior like that. It is, it is something that is a, a wow experience that if you get to experience it, it's, it's one of those things that you'll never forget and it's, it's an animal coming into your space in a way. Um, obviously, we didn't do anything to encourage the behavior into the vehicle and... Uh, yeah, we just had to make sure that it didn't carry on. So hopefully with us doing that, it's it's given her a warning. She was just curious looking around the car. There was nothing sinister at play. She didn't um, get into the vehicle or climb up onto the bonnet or anything like that. But obviously it is still a bit too close for comfort. So yeah, just a little bit of a debriefing of the sighting. Obviously special experience, but on the other hand, could be detrimental to the animal, which is why it's important to intervene and, and make sure that she doesn't do it again. And hopefully by me doing that this morning it it will make her realize that it's not the right thing to do um that's all we can hope but anyways i hope that you all enjoyed that one and we'll see you on the next episode of the virtual safari